All right, so in order to set up the tissueizer 2, we want to start with our blocks that we have here, have them deconstructed. We have the bottom plate, the top plate, and then the adapter block that goes on the inside. This is going to hold our uh, uh, 24 tubes, up to 24 tubes. Uh, it can hold 2 mil and 1.5 mil tubes. Uh, so basically what we want to do is we want to put some of our samples in. Uh, it helps, especially because you're going to be sandwiching these, if you can support all of the corners so that it's even. And then we can have two more samples in here. And then what we're going to do is put this into the lower block. And then uh, the part that faces the tube should have the rubberized top on it for that kind of like squeezing factor to keep it closed. So these two face plates, they, you can see that the knobs on here are off-centered. So I need to make sure that those knobs are on the same side on either side. So this one's here, and then this one is also on this side. So we're good there. So this is a full complete sandwich that we know where it is. So now that I have it ready, I want to get it into our tissueizer. So when we're looking at this uh, system that we're holding, there's kind of this like cradle on the edges here, that is what is going to go into these blocks. So I'm going to slide it in. Um, oh, I'm gonna loosen it a little so I can get it in. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's sitting on the edge of those cradles. And then I'm just gonna start cranking it close. The clicking that you're hearing is the safety here. There's a little spring in it and it's basically there to stop you from being able to unwind this. So when it is in its notches, I can't loosen this, it's stuck. And so that's to help our sample stay in when this is like vigorously shaking. So I just wanna get it hand tight, make sure that my safety is still in, and then I usually wiggle this a little. So this is moving a little bit, but that is just the whole thing moving. It's not that it is actually going to come out. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna put this down into its groove. It's gonna come up and down, up and down. I'm gonna make sure it is all the way down. Now, when we try to reverse, as you can see, this is stopping. So if I tighten it a little bit, pull it out, leave it outside of its grooves, then I can lefty loosey loosen it just fine. So once we have everything loaded in, we want to make sure that they are balanced because uh, we're going to have opposing forces working against each other. So you want that balance to be in there. These blocks can go in in either orientation. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to close the shield. And then when we're looking at our panel here, we have frequency and then time are the major factors we're going to go with. So right now this is set at 25 Hertz per second. And then we're going to run this for five minutes. So if everything is in, the shield's down, we can hit start and just kind of walk away for five minutes. In order to stop the run, you hit stop. You can do it prematurely if so need be. But when we want to reverse the process, make sure it's stopped, open the shield, and then you're going to want to try to crank these open. Now the problem is that safety is still engaged. So you need to try to pull up the safety. If it doesn't pull up, you want to tighten it a little bit to make sure it's at its apex, and then you can pull it out of its grooves. And then I can just hand loosen this. So do to do to do to do. Oop, get that back in. All right. So now we have our sample. Now, if you want good mixing and proper mixing, you could see what when these are swinging, samples that are on the outside of the block travel a lot farther and so they experience a lot more force than those that travel close to here. So what we want to do for whatever samples we have is we want them all to experience the same amount of force. So what we can do is we can take this block out, rotate it 180 degrees, and then sandwich them back together and then reinstall it in. This allows all of the samples that are inside of there to experience the exact same uh, amount of force because we want to keep things even. You want all of your samples to be extracted well uh, with each other. So once that one's installed and then if I flip this one, you would then put it back in, go in for however many cycles that you need. 
Uh, and then once you're done, you can just reverse the disassembly procedure that we did.